Hey y'all, so there were a ton of questions from my last Q&A that I wasn't able to get to and I feel bad like asking y'all for questions and then not getting to like three quarters of them because I'm so long winded and these videos get so long. Um, so I wanted to go through and answer some of the ones that I had to skip last time or some that really came in. I mean, I filmed the video like 10 minutes after I asked for questions so a lot of them I just didn't see in time. So I'm gonna go back from the bottom of the list upwards and see how many I can get through. So the first question comes from Elle, AKA at White Elephants, and she asked me, how do I decide which items to put in a project pan and which items to declutter? Basically project panning, the way at least I interpret it, is project panning is for people who have too much makeup, basically for a beauty addict who has either a little bit too much or a lot too much makeup. And it's a way to downsize and also give you perspective on how long it actually takes to use up these products. To start out, I always pan things that I like, but there's typically two categories. Things that I like and I may not love and I just want to get the money that I spent out of it and use it up and never repurchase it and just use it up and go on my way, okay? That probably accounts for the vast majority of the items I pan. That's the category that they fall in and I think for most people as well. Um, but there is another category where you do want to get use out of the items that you love, your holy grails, etc. But a lot of people won't pan their favorite items. They want to like hoard them away, stow them away or whatever and use the items that they're just kind of meh about, right? But in my opinion, they're just going untouched. They're going to go to waste. It's going to take you X amount of time to finish up that lipstick, eyeshadow, whatever. And your actual favorite items are just going to get older and older and you're not going to touch them. And I don't want that to happen. That's why we spend this crazy amount of money on products that we love is to use them. So in my project pans, I like to do a mix of products that I'm meh about that I just want to use up and move along. And also items that I actually really love because I don't want to neglect them. And the thing is, people don't want to use them because they think, oh no, then it will be gone. And yes, in a sense it will be, but you can always go repurchase it unless it was a limited edition item. And even if it was limited edition, there's, there's so much makeup coming out every single week. We can't even keep up with it. There is always something newer, better, greater, etc. Seriously, no matter how much you love that product, use it. Get your money's worth out of it. Enjoy it. Don't just hoard it away and then move on to the next thing and find your next lipstick, powder, eyeshadow, whatever it is that you feel the same way about. Don't you remember that's the way it used to be for us? Like before we got into the beauty community, you know, we had like maybe our small-ish makeup collection and we had things we absolutely loved and we used them every single day. We didn't used to be afraid of not getting something again. There's always something newer and better on the market. That's just the way I see it personally. So Katie House, AKA Barefoot Mommy, asked me what do I miss most about my life before veganism? And I actually had to think about this question for a while because my initial instinct was like, nothing. I don't miss anything. I don't long for anything. Um, and, and the only thing I could really come up for for this, like yes, sweets are hard for me. That's my favorite. I definitely have a sweet tooth. Um, but it's, it's not even that, and I definitely don't miss meat. What it is is more so the social aspect of it, of being able to walk into any single restaurant and not even ha even having to think, do they have options for me here? That That's probably the hardest part of it, is having to say to my family, like, hey, can we go somewhere else? I don't think they're going to have anything I can eat there. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't really care. The vegan tax also kind of gets me sometimes, too. How basically, like, the vegan tax is having to pay the same amount of money for the same food, even though you're not getting the most expensive ingredient, which is meat. You know, like, you go somewhere and order a burrito or something like that, and uh, you have to order the meat one and say no meat, but they charge you the same. So you're paying, like, 10 bucks for a burrito with just, like, lettuce and avocado in it. You know what I mean? The next question comes from Isabel Fustel. Is that how you say your last name? She basically asked me about supplementing B12, vitamins, minerals, all that. And to tell you the truth, I don't pay attention to any of it, nor will I ever. Um, I've had multiple blood tests since going vegan. Never have I had any issues. Never have I been low in anything. I do eat a pretty good variety of vegetables and fruits. Um, the thing is, I will never count calories. I will never count minerals or any of that because it's just so dangerously close to 
the routine and the rituals you get into with an eating disorder and I don't ever want to start down that road again not even not even a little bit um, because I don't want to become obsessed with the numbers again my life is so wonderful now that food is just something that I enjoy and something that nourishes my body versus something I'm afraid of, something that's gonna make me fat, um, something that I have to get on the scale four or 10 times a day, something I have to write down every single morsel that passes through my lips. Um, I'm so glad, I mean, glad doesn't even cut it. Glad does not come close. It, it's, um, I don't even know a word. It, I don't, it's like a relief. Um, that I don't have to worry about things like that anymore and it's been a long road to get here too I will tell you that much um, there was times in my life when I counted everything and I would be like afraid of people seeing me with food afraid that people knew that I ate like every human eats but it's it's the disorder in your mind it takes over your mind and just pollutes it and so I don't ever ever want to go down a road of counting things ever again counting calories minerals vitamins none of it for me it all leads to a dangerous road again if I in the future a future blood test come back that I'm deficient in something then maybe I'll start paying a little bit closer attention to it um, honestly probably not you know if I'm low in iron I'll just try eating more dark leafy greens or something like that I will never count calories or count how many grams of minerals and stuff like that no nope, never honestly that's why when I get girls asking questions about like going vegan vegetarian everything like that I'm like I don't know that I'm the best person to be asking um, I don't I just don't eat animal products and I leave it at that that's the only question I can answer for you. So Melody from The Script Life asked me what country do I want to visit most in the world. I definitely have a bucket list of places I want to go. I love to travel. Um, I don't think I could pick one. I really want to go to Japan. Um, I'm kind of all about researching Japan right now because I've read Memoirs of a Geisha and I've been just watching Geisha documentaries and D Japan documentaries. I've been super into it lately. Um, so I would love to go to Kyoto and go to like a traditional actual geisha tea house and have like tea ceremony. Miss Aiden 11 asked me what sort of health and or beauty products have been the most difficult to find new favorites of now that you're cruelty free. I will tell you it is foundation and mascara and from conversations I've had with friends that seems to be a very common one and that's another reason why I want to do lots of cruelty free foundation reviews on my channel because I want that information out there because I think a lot of people struggle with that. At Iotine, sorry, don't know if I'm saying that right, asked me how do I feel about Too Faced being bought by Estee Lauder. Man, it's devastating. It really is. Um, we lost Too Faced and Becca, like back to back, both being bought by Estee Lauder. And it just, I mean, it has me thinking like there is hardly any um, companies, cruelty free makeup lines that are not owned by parent companies anymore, at least mainstream ones. Of course, there are always indie brands and maybe that's what I just need to go to. Um, you know, of course, I mean, this is my opinion on parent companies, if you're wondering, and I've never really formed a solid opinion. And so that's why I've been very hesitant to put it out there. Um, this is the only thing I know for certain is that buying from a cruelty free company owned by a parent company is better than buying non cruelty free altogether, but it's not as great as buying from a completely cruelty free brand. That's the only thing I can really say for sure. What was it like 1.2 billion billion with a B that made them billionaires overnight? Oh, I, I don't know that I could withstand, you know, someone throwing that much money at me. I really don't. So I can't really judge, you know, I will say it is disappointing and um, it sucks definitely for people who are committed to not buying from parent companies. But I do have faith. I have faith in Too Faced that they'll do the right thing and won't go into China. And I think those were all the questions I missed in the first video. But if you have any for a future Q&A video, just leave them down in the comments below. I know we've been trying to do some live chats. I wanted to do one this weekend while I had off, but was just so busy trying to get Christmas decorations up and it was just an incredibly busy weekend that I wasn't able to get in when on a date so I just wasn't able to get everything done that I wanted done and still film and do all that stuff so hopefully we'll be doing one soon though I really do enjoy them too but thank y'all for watching I'll see y'all in two days in my next video don't ever forget that it is perfectly okay to just be small town famous love y'all bye